Hey everybody, my name is Lindsay Malone and I'm one of the assistant coaches with the track and field program at CU Buffs. I'm in charge of the combined events and jumps and I'm also an artist. I'm really excited to share today with you. We're gonna paint a buffalo, hopefully with a familiar buffalo that you've seen before. We're gonna be working on this guy so everybody gets a chance to figure out uh, how I paint and make these decisions for a really excited, colorful buffalo. Um, I'm going to take you through the steps that we're going to do together. Hopefully you have all of your um, supplies ready. If you don't have paints today, you couldn't get out. This is going to be so much fun anyway. Grab some markers, some crayons, colored pencils, and a piece of paper. This is just a time for us all to be together and to relax and have some fun. Painting for me has been something that has just been such an enormously wonderful part of my life and I'm so excited to share it with you guys. So let's just have a stress-free afternoon and enjoy painting something that brings a smile to all of our faces. So get out your, your brushes. Um, usually when I start a painting, um, I start out with a bit of a sketch. So I've sketched out a bit of a buffalo here um, to save some time for us. Um, and then I look through my color, my color choices. Um, this was a long process for me. I went to college for art and traditionally I learned how to paint just as everyone else does, natural colors for natural things. And then uh, as I progressed, my professors continued to help um, push me in the direction that I was really excited about. And uh, thank you to all my professors and all of my family for supporting things that uh, can turn into exciting, vibrant colors like this. Um, so let's get to it. So typically when I'm looking at a painting, I choose my color palette first. So the colors we sent out to you guys, um, if you're prepared for that, primary colors, it's going to work for us today. We're not going to do a ton of mixing. We're just going to get straight to it. So I get out a grouping like this. This is an awesome set that you can get. If you go to um, get some coupons at Michael's or Hobby Lobby, you can probably get this half off too. And it's just a great palette to, for you to figure out what kind of colors that you want to work with. So oftentimes when I'm looking at what I want to paint, I decide the color scheme. So for this painting here, um, I liked a lot of bright and exciting colors. It's bold, it's courageous, um, and that's what the buffaloes are to me. And so this is the color palette that we're gonna be working with. So hopefully, if you've seen the big buffalo, the mural that the marketing department at CU helped me put on um, over at the CU Event Center, this is half of the mural and we're gonna be doing that today. So I'm gonna put this at the top here so you guys can have reference for it. So with this color palette, you're basically gonna be going with, we'll start with the red, we'll just go the color of the rainbow. So you have your red, you're gonna have orange, yellow to be fair there's no green in there so we've we've taken a little bit out of, of that there and you can go blue which you can make green if you decide put those puppies together and you've got that i've branched out a little bit and i've added a couple more highlight colors in here so i'm gonna have a bright blue that we got growing on here these guys um and then we're gonna pull in i don't use a lot of white or black in my paintings i just like bright colors but you can always lighten up say this blue with a little bit of white and you can make it more towards this tint and color. So once I choose all of these, then um, I have a tendency to paint a little bit bigger, as you've seen. Um, so then I go to the, the, the big boys. So this is usually the size that I choose to use because I have to cover big canvases. I brought out a bunch of different brands here. Um, they all do different, wonderful, amazing things. Um, it really, you don't have to have anything special. You just have to have something that you can enjoy doing. So I use smaller brushes. I like the short, the short handles. You can also get handles that are this big. That's not something I use. Um, you can get the little party packs at Meiniger's, Jerry's, Dick Blick's, Hobby Lobby, Michael's, any of those starter packs are great to use. For acrylic, which we're gonna be using today, just choose the acrylic brushes. You don't need the natural hair brushes for acrylics. You kind of want plastic on plastic type of thing. Um, they wash off really quick and easy. If you feel like parents that this is gonna be, or people, if this is gonna be a mess, then set your perimeter um, because you can get messy. I don't have a tendency to get on me, but today will be the day, so I guess we'll see it there. So when I set this up, I have all of my Paint brushes out, something that you can choose to mix on if you want. To be fair, often I just go straight from the bottle if I'm using a color that I'm really excited about. Or you can even use just a plate um, from the house. This can rinse off very easily as well. Um, so I'll have that out here with us also. Okay, so when I look at a design that I'm going for, typically I try to look at shapes first. So to prepare the canvas, if you guys want to, this buffalo is online. So you're welcome to look at that and get a quick sketch out of it. But oftentimes what I figure out is the easiest thing for me to do is I'll just look at the shapes first. So actually I'm gonna move this set 
because we can be done with that. I prefer to have my paint or my water right next to me here that you can clean off your brush between. Um, obviously I've used that quite a bit. It's my favorite. My husband got it for me and it's been with me for I think my whole career here. So get your paintbrush a little bit wet. You can dry it off in your paper towel right here. I go for the lightest colors first um, because it's easier to go back later on and cover up the darks. Other people go darks to light, it's totally okay. Um, the biggest thing is don't judge yourself too much fun, too much right now, just have fun doing it. It's like anytime you're learning something new, a cartwheel was awesome even before you knew how to do a cartwheel. It was just fun enjoying the process. So when you're looking at your canvas, you wanna look at potentially the biggest shapes first. So I've loaded up my brush a little bit here. Um, and what I'm gonna do is, here's a technique that you can use. Actually, I'm gonna cover that off a little bit. Um, I'm gonna, quarter off my canvas here. So basically I'm gonna give myself some guidelines on where to stay in for this image. So this right here is equidistant on each side, so that's half. I'm gonna put another just guideline here, which is half, and then you're gonna make sure that this is about half, and you can eyeball that, that's okay. And then in between here, you're gonna half that again, boop, boop, and then on each side, so eyeballing this is totally okay. If you would like to measure, you certainly can. This one's gonna be a little bit off, but that's okay. You're just using it as guidelines. So this is a plan that I'm gonna cover up the rest of the canvas. So from there, you can identify where your midpoint is, which would be this is the middle of the canvas. When you're looking at putting on, say this buffalo for instance, this is actually gonna be the mid light for him. His eye is gonna rest in the middle as well as his tail. And then this is pretty much gonna go straight through the middle of it. So when I look at shapes, which is really exciting, load up your brush again. I'm gonna go for yellow, it's my biggest and boldest color, and it's gonna give me a good outline. And it'll be easy to cover up later when I decide to put on my background, which I love black backgrounds. So when I'm first initially looking at this, I'm gonna start at the midpoint and just left of the midpoint here, I'm just gonna draw a big zero. All you really need to do is big zero and you're gonna go up about to this, this line here, which would be a quarter of it. And then you're gonna go down just slightly above this. So this is my big zero. Everybody done that? Okay. Looks like a big egg a little bit. Then the next thing you're gonna do is you're just gonna block out another shape. So just to the right of that, right to the midline of here, and then just right to the, the center line there, I'm just gonna make a big egg shape, just slightly higher than the zero you just made. So this is my egg, slightly slanted there. And all I'm doing right now is just getting a rough outline of where I want my buffalo to be on the canvas. And sometimes it's a lot easier just to look at the shapes um, than it is to look at something like, oh, well, he has fur and this part's sticking out there and I don't know where his head or his horn should be. Just go for shapes first. So just to the right of this big egg, we're gonna make another egg and you're gonna go from midpoint here to just slightly above here. And this one is gonna look more along this lines. So here we go. We have another egg. This is getting exciting, isn't it? And at this point, you all are doing an amazing job. And then the last one probably I'll use in this series is I'm just gonna do another egg shape and it's gonna be over on this side. Okay, so as easy as this looks, you could look like this is an entire family of faces. You've got mom, dad, a couple kids here. This is pretty much gonna be the outline of your buffalo. So at this point, it becomes really fascinating and easy <laughs> is you just connect the back. And now, as you can see, but this actually, you've got your main shape for your buffalo. So once you get through the head, just make a little triangle here, make a little triangle here, and then when you come down, it's gonna be more like an L. You'll make another L, and then you'll make something that looks like the front side of a D. So all you're looking for right now is some shapes. You don't have to worry about too much else, just have fun. So underneath his, what's gonna be his nose here, if you go halfway through this egg that you just created, all you're gonna do is draw, um, let's say that this is an, a V, just about that size. And it's gonna come just right underneath where his horn is as well. And then just to the left of that, then you're gonna draw a circle. Right about there. Right below that, you're gonna draw slightly cattywampus square. And then from here, I want you just to draw a line from your circle through your square down straight. And then you're gonna connect your V by a little half loop there 
And that's going to turn into what's later going to be his front leg. So load up your, if you'll notice, I'm not using too much. This is about all we're using right now on paint on each one. You're just going to get an outline of all this. And then you're going to come back later and have some real good color blockage putting down. Okay, so right underneath your, your big egg right here, you're going to draw, what is this shape? Well, this is going to be a fish right here. So you have a little fish shape there. And then from there, you're just going to draw a nice line that goes up here till mid. And then you're going to follow that line right next to your fish. You're going to make some things that kind of looks like feathers. So come down here and you're going to just feather along the same line as where your fish would be. And you're going to send it over to where the square is. Give it a couple more feathers. And then in the midline of the square, just bring it down just about that far. And you'll connect it to the front. So hopefully, <laughs> We're on the same pace here, and this is getting pretty fun for you because you can start things, seeing things happening. Again, you're going to come from midline, and then you're going to follow this line right about where the fish's tail would be. And then you're just going to draw a straight line. Go a little bit to your left, feather it slightly here. Short line that's going to be almost equal to this front. Down here, draw a straight line, and then right below all of this, another straight line. Our buffalo's coming around, folks. Okay, the next exciting thing. So you're gonna go to the other side now, and right below the this slightly angled egg, you're just gonna draw another slightly straight, slightly curved line there. And then from here, just angle it out. You'll go up again, and you'll take this line, and this is just gonna be a nice kind of curved line there. You only need to take this down to about your marking point here, which was the halfway point. Give it a little flare because that's going to be his tail or her tail. Let's do let's do Ralphie Six. We'll all name her Ralphie Six for whoever we get to meet soon. Taylor, this is going to be exciting. And then go up here and you've just connected the tail. So you're going to need to give him a hind leg. So all you're going to do for this one is just take a nice, very smooth line like that. You're just going to bring it on down. So you've kind of started a very meandering S that you're gonna bring out. So we've got a nice S here. And then once you get to this point, which is about equal to where this line came in, just straight down. And again, you're trying to meet up with this line here. You wanna ground your buffalo. <laughs> Make sure some feet are on the ground in the same line. So right here, you're just gonna go back to the other one and that is connected as well. Load up your paintbrush again. From the back leg, you've got your midpoint here and this other here, you're gonna half that. And right about here, come out with a line that looks like this. Then you're gonna have another fun swoop and line that looks about the same. This one is also gonna be mirroring that. And then from there, you can just take this straight down. Here, for this back actually, I want to go straight here. And we're gonna also ground them there. Fun stuff, right? <laughs> Okay, now we just gotta give him belly. So from here, we've got halfway over here, if you measure this down, and we're halfway on this line, is gonna be the lower point of his belly. So you put that there, and then you just connect where this is here. So once you've laid this out, then you've got basically everything you need to see on there, and now you can have fun with color. We probably should add some reminders of where his nose is gonna be. So right here, Let's see, you're gonna draw a U, but sideways. There you go, there's his nose. And it can be this easy, it's okay. And then when his eyes are gonna be, all you're gonna do is put a little bit of a frown, a little bit of a happy face, and a dot in the middle. And that for now is enough. So once you've got all of this down, now the exciting part is you can go back in and start laying down your color. Um, so when you rinse this off to go to a different color, make sure you get it off good. You can see over on your paper towel if it's clean or not. If not, keep going back in it. What you don't want to do is leave your brushes in here because it, it kind of ruins the, the bristles. And then also if you have a wood brush, like this one's a wood brush, I've let, left this in actually, you can see it splitting. It splits because it absorbs the water. So you just want to make sure you rinse them off and then go ahead and put it down somewhere that's nice and flat. So once I do this, I usually just go in and color block big. So that's when I usually go in for a bigger brush. This is the size of brush that I'm using for this one. Get it nice and wet. This is gonna help your acrylic pull across your canvas just a little bit better. And you can be doing this on paper, on canvas. I'm using a board right now um, to help this process go along with me. So now you just color block. So for the, the buffalo that we're doing, it's when you get to lay down a good amount of paint. So don't feel shy about it. 
doesn't have to be super consistent in color unless you really ex are, are wanting to do that for your pigment. Um, the great thing about acrylic is that it dries really fast. And so sometimes when you see people and they put a bunch of paint out on their palette here, or like here, um, one color will dry when you're just using the other. So oftentimes I just try to keep them in unless I'm using some a big portion and trying to cover a canvas like that, then you know you want to have as much available as possible. Um, but for me, this works just fine, especially for the color palette that we're using. So up here, I'm going to, for this section, just gonna color block in a nice circle for half of this, of your big O. And then up here, I'm gonna make a sideways, there we go, oval. And that's the next color block that I'm gonna use. So you can keep going over and making sure that you're covering it the way that you want and getting good pigment in. How's everybody's looking? You're liking what you're making? Or at least you're having fun. That's the best part about this. And so over in this section, I'm gonna go again and I'm gonna decide, hey, I just wanna highlight here, which just means it's going brighter. I'm gonna highlight again over here. And on the front side of his leg, I'm gonna do that here again. Color in this and our half of our fish from earlier. And then the front side of that square back side of his foot here, and then this section is gonna be a highlight also. This from the bottom here, you can go ahead and bring that line over to almost where his eye would be. So just under where the horn is, and then bring that down and just make a fun shape. It doesn't have to be anything particular, just a nice fun shape. And the whole time for this is, I was very scared when I first started painting because you know, the, the materials were expensive and the canvas was, and I didn't want to make a mistake. And so I was very cautious with everything that I did. And fortunately, all of my professors just kept encouraging me to keep working and just have fun. And so the first time you put a big stroke of paint on a big canvas, it's very intimidating. Um, but like anything new in life, it's intimidating. But as soon as you let yourself just have freedom to enjoy, it's entirely fun. So don't judge yourself on this. Just go out, have fun, make some shapes. So the shape here you created, you can identify that a little bit more later. We're gonna go in one more spot. I want a smaller brush. I prefer smaller brushes and I love these. Angled brushes are my favorite. I don't know if you had a chance to see the mural um, or the portion of the mural that we were doing, but I went out and purchased all of these amazing huge brushes because that was the biggest canvas I've ever done. And uh, <laughs> I wound up using none of them because I'm mostly comfortable with these small. So covering a space that's uh, 20 some feet long and 13 feet high in small brushes, you have to work fast, um, but it was entirely wonderful and enjoyable. So you're gonna do another triangle up here with this yellow and then the bottom of his horn here, go ahead and make that yellow as well. His little billy goat scruff down here, just give it a couple lines right there and then the top of where his little nostril is and the bottom just give it a couple more and then right under his eye here too just make a circle right there okay i think i think this is oop another spot on his last his back leg here you're going to want another highlight highlights are things that kind of bring it out um, the lighter spots. So how I manage this since I don't use white and I don't use mostly natural colors is the bright colors come out towards you in a canvas and the darker colors will recess. So usually people do this to make something that's 2D look 3D. I do this <laughs> to make things really exciting and pop off the canvas. Um, so that's my way of working, working these color systems here. Okay, so right now let's just say that we're done with the bright yellow. We're gonna add a little spot right there. And then we're gonna move on. How about let's move on to, we're gonna go for orange. And I just splashed on my own canvas, see? So if I can do it, you can do it. Just take a little bit of that, wipe it off and we're good. Okay, so I'm gonna probably go this version of, this is yellow deep. So basically it is one step between orange and bright yellow. So if you don't have this, you can mix them together. And all you do if you wanna mix them together is you just take your orange, you don't need too much, Put it on your palette, you're gonna take yellow, put that right next to there, and then you're just going to take a bit from here and a bit from here and mix them up. And then you can start deciding on what version of this color you like. So I need a little bit more yellow because I want it to be a lighter orange. So see how you can make that color? So that's between the two of them. 
And then for here, actually, that's a quite nice color. I'm gonna use that. So for this portion, all I'm gonna do is come up here and I'm gonna fill in some of these spots right here and just outline this. And this is gonna come all the way up through here as well. I'm gonna circle that with this color. I'm gonna put that down actually and get a smaller brush because you guys know that I like smaller brushes. And let's go back to here. And then if you need to make more of this color, you can certainly go up to the top and make some more. So this is also gonna come across the top here. And then around, and I'm gonna just make another, I like shapes, it's just easier to see that way and you judge yourself less. <laughs> so I'm gonna make this here. And then so for my paint on this canvas, I'm not putting a ton of color and pigment down right now, it's not very thick. Um, so I'll go back in later and make these all darker to bring really bring out the colors. But right now I'm just kind of getting the general idea of what's going on in this painting. And for now, this is what's going on. So hopefully you're doing this along with me. You're just going to outline this shape as well. And then back here, you've come around here. You're going to go across the top again for this. You're just going to fill in this and just bring this line down a little bit. It's just going to highlight that area as well as a slightly darker area within the design that we're going for right now. And then on the front side, just make this nice swooping line here. Make another one next to it. It's okay if you just went through and that wasn't entirely dry for me, but that's okay because all of this is fun. You're going to fill in this as well. And then go ahead and bring this line down once, down twice, don't judge yourself. You can just, it's okay to move fast and free. Mostly just have fun. Okay, I'm gonna need to blend these again. I'm doing, that's nice. That's actually a really nice darker color. So my brush is loaded up and when you get it too much, you can just turn your brush. This is an easy technique to get too much off. And then you're, they're ready to roll again. So underneath this line, you're just going to make another big U of that color. Outline this shape. And then you're going to go in on that part of the fish and then make that a little bit darker as well. And I'm calling these sh shapes, that's a fish, just because we discussed that earlier. So if you're, if you're joining us right now and you don't see a fish in your painting, that was just a reference point. <laughs> okay, so for here, you're just going to bring this line down a little bit, create another just fun shape in there. And right here, we're just going to give a couple more kind of outlines to what's going on. Good work, everybody. Okay. Moving on. We're going to go in now that we've color blocked and we're going to go in with a different section. I want to add some darks. So if you look at your canvas right now, for me, this spot's not gonna dry for a while because I left a little bit too much paint on there. So I just avoid that for a little bit and go with a different section until those can dry and then I'll add another layer of paint. So if you have something like a brilliant blue, these colors, that's gonna be a, or cerulean blue, these are gonna be something that you can block in next. So I'm excited about this color right now. So we're gonna go here a little bit. Um, if you want to mix this, all you do is take this blue and add white to it until you get as much. But just remember that you don't have to pour a lot. This wasn't a lot of paint and it went a long way. And then of course I'll go back in later and put another layer down for that. Um, but for this, I've brought out a, a many paint brushes, so I'm not gonna be spreading my colors there, but just make sure that you clean your brush off each time. So here, you're just gonna come down on this part where you put the feathering in and you're just gonna fill in this block of color right here. And go ahead and bring it all the way up there. This later on is gonna help create um, an exciting line between what's gonna be a really dark background and, um, and the buffalo. I'm gonna to choose to paint my, my background black. And I choose to do it later. A lot of people do their backgrounds first, um, but sometimes I have a harder time seeing the image that I wanna create. So I just wait till, till the end and see what inspires me. Um, for instance, that painting, I knew the buffalo I wanted to sketch, and so I sketched it out. And then for four months, I walked by it every single day, visualizing the color scheme that I wanted to use. And it just, it wasn't coming, it wasn't coming, but it's like anything else. It's visualizing your shot or your golf swing or 
high jumper hurdles. You just visualize it and keep seeing it until it comes to you. And so then the image came to me in the colors that I wanted to use. And now it's, it's going very fast. Um, but it took about four months before I was inspired by color palette and what I wanted to do there. So it's okay if you're starting out and you're not entirely sure what you want to do color wise and, and going with natural colors is totally fine and totally amazing. Um, but this is just the, the version of painting that I like doing. So I'm glad that y'all could join me for this. Okay, so you're just gonna draw the nice blue line here. All this is is really just gonna be a highlight. And um, I don't paint on board as often with acrylics. Um, so you'll see that these are really not dark at all. So all of these steps I'm gonna go back over later on and just give more pigment and more um, a brighter, thicker paint basically. So it'll pop out at you. So for this, this hind leg here, all you're gonna do is right about here is just, all you need to do is just draw a little line here. Just about that thick. You're gonna bring a similar line from here down there. So when you look at it, it doesn't have to be overwhelming for all of the decisions you have to make. You just make one decision at a time. And mostly the biggest thing is have fun. It's a break. So hopefully families, y'all are doing this together. Um, or parents, you're doing this because you need a break. And this can be a stress reducer. It certainly is for me. Um, the more usually I have going on in my life and kind of things maybe that are stressful, this always helps give me peace and bring me happiness and hope. And it's always very exciting because you end with a product like that's something that you created. And you don't have to judge it if it's good or bad. It's just, it was fun to create. Okay, so you've got the same blue here. We've made some colors all around here. You're going to give another line back here. And then right above Billy Goat Scruff, go ahead and put a line here on the side of his face from his eye down. Go ahead and make something that looks like this type of triangle. And then just another dot that's right next to the other. In fact, you're probably going to do a couple in this section. I paint around. Some people will put the base layer down first and that is totally fine as well. I enjoy painting around often just because it helps me see things a little bit better. So from this point here, just under his eye, you're just going to create this fun line off of the line you already created. I'm just going to go ahead and bring that down there. And then the very low point for this line, I like highlighting that as well. So that's going to come down here. I'm going to bring that up on that side. Another there. You can see where we're going with this, right? It's turning into them. Okay, up here and we're, we're going to call the scruffy area. I'm just going to do this one, but I'm going to leave spaces open. So just make some big areas that kind of have some random circles. And that's going to show that there's some texture within this front portion here. You can bring that all the way down to this other horn. And then right behind the horn, we're gonna have a little bit of shadow created. So you're gonna start with the same blue, bring that back a little bit, just in that shape. And then that's gonna create a shadow later on. Okay, hopefully the level of brightness that you're seeing is okay for what y'all are trying to work on too. I'm gonna do another blue up here, a couple more. I think we're good for there. Okay, this one I wanna bring up a little more and give that type of. Okay, how are we all doing? Doing all right? Okay, this one is actually in front of here, so we'll highlight again. There we go. Got our basic shapes down. So go ahead and let's bring in actual orange. So as orange as you can find. If you don't have orange, you're gonna take out your red and your yellow. Okay, I'm gonna go straight orange and we can go from the orange that I used earlier on here. And this one, you're just gonna create some more shapes. It can all be about shapes and that's okay. Actually, let's get a little bit brighter here. This is gonna be another shape. I'm gonna bring in more red. I'm gonna go a little more red on this just because my colors are a little light right now. So here's red. I want a little bit of the orange in there. There we go. That's gonna mix up a little bit brighter of a color for me. So just create a shape there and then under here, I wanna add another highlight right there.
And then we're going to add just a little bit of a C here and then a circle kind of oval on this side right about there. You can add create another one here and then another one here. And this can always be very loose in your gestures because you can come back in and style it up a little bit later when you put on more paint. I like putting contrasting colors next to each other because they make things bright and stand out. Okay, so for this section, I like this orange here in the yellow, but I'm going to make it pop more by putting this red around it. And right now you can see that on my red, maybe you can see this, I went through blue. So blue is now on my red, which I'm not too worried about because I can just cover it up with more paint. <laughs> and we're going a little bit quick because um, I know y'all have uh, some stuff to do in this time. And you can always go back and watch this later. So the first time around we're videotaping this, we might go live later on. Um, but we're going to videotape it because everyone has different schedules right now and we wanted to accommodate classes and parents that are multitasking, teachers and workers and all the things you're doing um, that are just totally amazing. So good work with all of that. And that y'all can do this on family time when it works for you. So you'll notice I'm just putting in lines everywhere. And it's not really looking like entirely a Buffalo or the in Buffalo product that we're going to do, but this is just getting the initial design out of where we want some of these things. Okay. I do want the orange again, the real orange. That was just a darker version. So here we are back to orange. And we're going to go in for his face here. So it's a similar thing that you want to do with what you did up the here with the blue is that you're just going to make kind of a scruffier looking texture. And oftentimes you can just do that by making circles or something that looks like a little bit more organic and not straight lines. Again, don't judge, just put them down. Because later on I'm going to go back in and connect those. So we've got some of our base colors going. Okay, so we've got, I've got lots of areas that are drying right now. So that just means that you work on a different section. So let's go into our blue and we're going to put in some of the darker areas. So thank you to the Children's Hospital for presenting this. This is very near and dear to my heart and I appreciate everyone for all the things that are doing and everybody who's working really hard and being tough and being brave and courageous. Um, everyone who's there, all the workers, all the people, all the families. So thank you so much for giving this amazing opportunity for us to have some fun together. And then also see buffs. You guys are amazing. And I love that you bring these amazing projects to us so we can have some family time and get some cool stuff done. So dark blue, let's move on. So right here, you're just going to finish in this section. And then again, just block out this color. So you're going to make kind of like a triangle if you're looking for something to describe that by. So your triangle here, and then you're just going to put this at the top of the horn as well. And then right where you made his eye earlier, all around this section, you just want to circle it. That's actually going to be his eye and you're going to create more detail later on. Right above his schnoz, you're just going to put a little bit of an outline there as well. It's going to get darker here. And then this line, actually, you can follow this. And then this whole section now, you can just make blue. So go in and just color block that out. This is fun and exciting for me too. I don't paint on board like this very often. So I'm used to when I pull paint, it leaves a very distinct um, line and color. So we're learning through this together. Um, on panel board, now I know that I'm probably going to go over this a couple times which is exciting and fun for all of us. So right here, just make a, a little shape like that. I'm going to fill that in later with a different color. And then you're going to come in down here and on both sides, just fill that in. You can see that we're starting to get more of this outlined. And for some people, you'll love this color scheme. I feel like this would go really well in Florida. Just pop that up on the wall. If you're watching from Florida, you got 
We'll make some fish later on maybe for you too. So you're gonna use this dark color again and go back in all these lower areas and just fill this in. We're also gonna be going in with purple later on and that, can, that will make it much darker as well. Oftentimes, if there's something that I think I need for black, I will use really, really dark purple, violent, or um, mix dark blue and dark purple and that gives you a really nice kind of dark black color without having to use black. So if that's something that you guys are interested in, um, then you can do that as well. So over here, you're gonna create just some more fun areas. Just go ahead and bring lines up around here. You can color block more of this around these areas. This line's gonna come up and actually go into here because you're gonna give a definitive line of where his midsection is going here. So just feel free, just pull the paint down there, another section here, and then all of this can be dark. I'll go first with blue and then later on, obviously more blue, um, and then purple to even make the areas darker. But once you get this whole section down here, then you can just keep adding on layers. And this is not something where you have to sit down and go, I have an hour, I have to finish this now. Um, even if you have 15 minutes to paint, acrylic is really great because it's really quick and easy to clean up. Um, and so you can just do it really, whenever the mood strikes you, it doesn't have to be this big commitment of, I, I have to work on this for an hour or two hours. And that's always what I tell myself. I come home and I say, okay, I have a half hour between cooking or calling recruits, recruits or whatnot and say, I'm just gonna, you know, put down a couple layers of paint. And then oftentimes, you know, that'll just be so much fun. All of a sudden it's a half hour. And then uh, sometimes recruits, I'm also painting when I'm talking to you. So, hey, you get the whole shebang here, everything together. So keep making your color blocks with the darker. You'll also go on this back leg here, dark blue as well. So for everyone who is intimidated by painting, don't be, it's just tons of fun. Just like anything else, the more you practice, the better you get at it, the more you start to be able to see different things that make sense. And really just don't judge yourself. It's like the desire to want to play a guitar. You eventually want to play a song, but in all of the times before that, you're not making some pretty music, but eventually it turns into something if you practice it enough. <laughs> okay, so we got this that line there. Okay, so right here we needed to add just a little bit more yellow and then I'm going to go back in once this dries a little bit more and make those. But in the meantime, this is dry, this is dry, this is dry. So in the meantime, go back in and put in the color that you can keep adding up so those things dry. So we're going to go back in with the yellow for this one. In fact, I'm going to go heavy body. So hopefully this heavy body just means it's thicker. So you have lots of different kinds of paints that you can choose from. Um, you have gloss that goes on more transparent. You have more opaque. The thicker it is, it's going to be more opaque. So the color is going to be, the pigment is going to be darker or more vibrant basically. So I'm a fan of the more vibrant and I need my yellow brush because I'm not cleaning these entirely. See how much, just one extra layer, how dark that makes it now. That is nice. So when everybody's done with these, this is what I want to happen. So because you're doing something that is already a part of CU, hopefully for life and longevity, I want you, if you can, and I don't know if I need to get approval from uh, <laughs> marketing or facilities. But if you have a chance to go to a volleyball game, when we're all back in the world together, bring your painting and get a picture of you in front of the big painting, because we're all doing this together. And that was one of the biggest things about the mural that we created. And the reason why I chose two buffaloes is because no matter what we're going through, we can all make each other strong. And we can make each other happy and lean on each other and be courageous and shoulder to shoulder and all these wonderful things. So if you have that opportunity, if you can bring your painting with you to a basketball game when you go support our buffs, um, bring it to the CU Event Center and then get your photo in front of it. And then you or your parents, or if you are the parents, um, go ahead and tag me in it. And I'm going to create an account just for this on my account. And I'm going to put all of the great photos that y'all have created, or the paintings, on that tag and then we can all see what we've done and celebrate in each other's fun work okay so you have something to do after this once you've finished your masterpiece okay so see this this is feeling good to me now because this yellow ooh, that that wasn't so great so if you saw that from above 
<laughs> I just put blue in my yellow. Somehow that came about. So not to worry. So if you have extra paper towel, all you can you can do is just really go in and take that away because it's so wet right now. Or you can just wait till it dries. I'm taking it away now. And if you wait till it dries, you can go back in with white and just start over that section again. Um, if you're really precise, you can go in and sand the area down and make it even. I love things that make it look painterly that I did it. I went through college and I learned all of the great amazing things um, and how to do everything correct and beautiful and right and then how to do it all wrong. And through all those processes, you learn what you like and what you don't like. I like looking like I left a mark on this painting, so I like it where my lines went, where the shapes were, and if there's a happy accident like Bob Ross's, then there's a happy accident and I leave that on the canvas as well. So it's okay for all of you that are like, mm, I'm not sure if this is looking the way I want it to right now. Um, you can fix it later or you can just celebrate it that that was the moment that you did it and that's what it looks like. For me sometimes, <laughs> waiting for paint to dry is hard. So I gotta get, I got blue in this, I gotta get that out. So right now I will have maybe <laughs> I have this painting going, and then I have an oil painting, and another oil painting, another acrylic. So when I'm waiting for paint to dry with oil paintings, I have one painting that's now on year three. Um, it's a huge painting, and waiting for paint to dry takes forever. And so I've got this creative gene in my body that just has to get out, and it's very excited to do the things. So then I just decided to create more, <laughs> which works for me, but find the thing that works for you. Okay, I'm gonna add more yellow here in that spot. We're gonna bring yellow up into the here. We're just gonna be filling in these areas. I'm excited now that it's starting to come together so you guys can see the things on mine as well. Okay, yes, done with that for now. Waiting for the other things to dry. Okay, orange. I think orange looks dry enough that we can go back in for me and build this back up again. So if you've started to notice maybe that you've got some skills in this area, good job for you. If you feel like you have no skills, it's totally okay. Just create something fun. That's why art is so great, is that you can have people that are talented in the way that they make it look exactly like what they're trying to have it look like. My husband, our throws coach at CU, he's also a painter and he can make it look exactly to the little hair on your head what you look like in the same colors and all of that. It's, it's magnificent and he's incredibly talented and he worked at it for a really long time. Um, but that's something I completely admire because that's, that's not something that my brain wants to do. So I appreciate his abilities and that he's able to do it because it's something that just is more challenging for me to do. So you just find the version that's fun for you. And this is the version that's fun for me. So I really enjoyed the heavy body that I just used for the yellow because it's putting down my pigment better. So I don't want to run off screen, but I kind of want to find the heavy body for this orange. Fortunately, I have lots of paint everywhere. This will give, there we go. That's going to give a little bit better pigment. Just going back over the orange that I had on before, but now it's dry and I've got this great, great new version of thicker paint that's putting down more pigment. So these lines are going to be a little bit more visible. There we go. It's exciting when it comes around. So Lindsay Liu from our marketing department approached me to do this and I was incredibly honored. So thank you, Liu. And also incredibly intimidated um, because I want to make sure that 
we're all having fun and doing something that's creative together in in the way that you guys would want to see it so hopefully this is what y'all were looking for and we had a fun chance to get to do it together ish <laughs> this is being recorded a little earlier so Derek Swanson can come in and put this all together <laughs> and make this look right so I have uh, to thank my quarantine buddy Casey Malone for setting up all the audio and the, vid the video for this and then we're going to send it off to Derek Swanson later and he's going to do the next part and putting it all together and making it Facebook, Instagram, Twitter worthy for you guys um, as well as the team from the Children's Hospital. Um, Andy was also a part of this to help us get through it. Um, everyone's done a lot of things to make this possible. So thank you for everyone. And lucky for me, I get to be the person that makes the fun painting. Okay, we we're coming through. So this has got to dry. So in the meantime now, I'm just gonna block out the background so this stands out a little bit more. So I prefer, this is not black, it's called Payne's Gray. Um, love black for background, but this actually lays down, we'll see what it does on this board, but it lays down very nice for um, a big area of paint. And for that, I'll actually get a bigger brush. And then for the background, sometimes I just get excited and go straight for blocking. I'm gonna keep it up into these sections though, because we're gonna put a little bit of ground in below his feet to give an idea of being grounded. But this, this is the fun part, because this, look at this. I don't need these reference points anymore on the side because we've done our whole blocking out of color and shape. And now I just get to pull paint, which is, this is a fun feeling. I like to have straight colored backgrounds. If you want to gradient it, all you have to do is, once you get this color down, then you can add whatever color you want to add to make this go lighter. So it can be white. If you want to do that, you'll turn it in gray. And then you just keep going, mixing like you did over here and then you have several different sections of that color that you can lay down. Um, but y'all know, I like straight backgrounds. So I'm gonna get close to the buffalo right now, but he's still drying, she's still drying technically. So not entirely close, not totally to the ground here, just enough that I can get this going and get another section that's drying. Cause we're all trying to do this together on a slightly limited time schedule. Tis one of my favorite parts though. I love putting down big blocks of color. Okay, so at this point, say you have something else you need to do, you can check out because you got everything pretty much laid out the way you're gonna want it and you can just go back and highlight things and put in a little bit more detail. So all of this is that's interesting. Um, big blocks of color, and then you can go in with a fine-tuned brush later on and add some details. And details bring out, um, it's just like anything in life, details, finishes it off. So whether you're going in and making things brighter, or if you're going in and, and putting in a little bit more precise lines around the things, each section, then that will help things stand out as well. Okay, this was a lot of paint. So if you also put down a lot of paint, bravo to you. I got it smack dab in the middle of this painting. So I'm gonna go down here and also just put a straight line. Down here. I'm gonna leave a section open for us to go back in and put more of a ground. Okay. I have a lot of paint still on this brush. I'm gonna just take it off there before I put it in the water. Okay, oftentimes I'm gonna hide something in my painting. So I'm gonna hide a word or a name or something that's special to me. Um, if you've noticed at the, the CU Event Center, the big mural, it says my maiden name, it has my married name, um, it has my nephews and my nieces names in it. Um, so if you can ever find that, feel free to share it with me. You'll be sleuths. It's really fun. Um, but this would be the time where I would hide something in this section probably, either outline it, make it look like something else. You're gonna leave a section that you're gonna sign it later on. Um, but a lot of this has to dry right now. So in the meantime, again, we're gonna go in and make things so other things can dry. Okay, so I've got my brush ready to go. I'm gonna go back in with my heavy body because that's gonna leave the most paint actually on my canvas right now. 
smaller brush again. We're just going to make little circles at the bottom of this painting. Leave some space in between them. You're going to use yellow first. All we're doing is implying that there's going to be a ground. And initially when I made these, I was going to make like he was walking through a field. She was walking through a field. And autumn leaves. Initially when I made this and that they were blowing, that was what I was going for. Okay, that's a good start to that. And then I added blue because it needed a different pop, but one of my favorite blues is this blue right here, which, here we go. And you're just gonna make also similar, similar circles, just every now and then. And the reason why I do this on white instead of putting a color down first so I can just see it better. It's just the way my brain works. You can put this all black down and then paint on top of it if you want. But for some reason, this just really works for me. Okay. I do need to address that bit of black in the middle here that somehow got away from me. Okay. I did, I just liked that, you're welcome. Um, okay, so I think I'm just gonna keep building up the color on this. In the meantime, have fun. I hope you guys are having an amazing time together with your family and you're getting a chance to relax and process what's going on. Um, but I think at the end of this, I would love, when I finalize this painting, to donate it to the Children's Hospital. So we had some time together and now when people go in there, you have a chance to go in and look at something that hopefully brightens up your day and inspires you and fills you with courage and bravery for everything that everybody is doing um, to help our fellow man. So when this is done, Children's Hospital, find a space for it. It's coming your way and I wanna see all of yours. So make sure that when you're finished with this, that you put in to see you buffs or you can go um, to my coach, Lindsay Malone Instagram or Lindsay Malone art Instagram or my Twitter and post everything that you've created. I'm really excited to see it. I've totally enjoyed our time together. Um, so thank you for joining me for the first ever Buffalo Paint-a-thon, um, Paint-a-Buffalo. So I appreciate it guys. Thank you.